Okay, so this video is going to walk you through some of the basic things that you can do in PowerSchool. Um, there's two main components of PowerSchool. There's PowerSchool and there's PowerTeacher Pro. Uh, PowerTeacher Pro is the gradebook program and we have other videos on that so we're not going to get into that one here. But um, PowerSchool, and this is the main PowerSchool screen, uh, PowerSchool is where we keep all of our student information and I want to show you how to pull some of that student information up. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about real quick, um, we're not going to cover it in detail because again there's another video um, that covers this, but the main thing we do in PowerSchool is we take attendance and that's what these three columns are all related to here is they're taking attendance. Um, so we, we cover that in a different video, how to take attendance. Over here in this column on the left side, these are all the classes you teach. You notice uh, I'm a second grade teacher here, so you notice I don't have PE, I don't have art, I don't have music. That's the PE art. Music teachers have those classes. So these are just the classes I teach. Um, if I were switching, like let's say a lot of people switch science and health, I might have two sciences and no social science if I teach all the science and my partner teacher teaches all the um, social studies classes. Um, this fourth column here is Power Lunch. We don't use Power School for lunch. We have a different program for that, so you're going to ignore this column completely. The column we're going to spend all our time, well, two columns we're going to spend most of our time in are these two here. The first one is the Backpack column, and if you click the icon next to the class, it'll run whatever you're doing for the class in question. So if I click this one, it'll go to math. If I click this one, it'll go to writing. In my case here, I have the same five kids in all of these subjects. The only time you would be really concerned about this was if you had different kids in these classes and you only wanted to run it for a certain group of kids. You would click the icon next to the group of kids you wanted to run it for. It doesn't matter for me here, so I'll just pick Homeroom. When you click on the backpack, you bring up the student information screen. Over here on the left, it tells me I'm running this for Homeroom. Uh, down here, I can switch from class to class if I so chose. This is my class roster for homeroom. So I've got one, two, three, four, five kids. Um, to see information on an individual kid, and I'll pick Aaron Rodgers here. So if I click Aaron Rodgers, it gives me his class schedule here. Then up here at the top, it gives me other screens I can pick. And some of these you use all the time, some you won't use that much. We're not going to look at all of them in detail. Um, the one I want to spend most of our time on here today is the demographics page. The demographics page is where you're going to see all the kids information. There are name, address, phone number. So you've got that all here. Um, name, address, phone number, how old is he, his birthday, dad's name, uh, email address, mom's name is down here, her phone number, address. And the other thing on this screen you want to know about is the student uh, network login, name and password. Um, this is their password to get on the computer, password to use for um, Teams, email, whatever. Um, so if a kid comes to you and says, I don't know my password, you can find it here. I'm also going to show you in a minute how to run a report, um, a printout to have all the kids' passwords in one place. So that's what this is here, is uh, the password. So I'm going to come back up here. Uh, we will look at meeting attendance. This is their attendance. And this kid, let's see, this kid here has some attendance. Pretty good attendance. Ah, here we go. So he got a couple of days. Um, the week of March 1st to March 5th, he was absent on Monday and Tuesday. And then he looked like he was absent on the Tuesday of March 15th. It would be like, what, March 16th. And these codes here, so you got an E and F and L. So we're going to come all the way down here to the bottom. E is illness full day. So he was sick those two days. And F and L is funeral. So these are all the codes that you might see on this list. So this kid was sick. So let's come back up here. This kid was sick these two days, and then he had a funeral this day. So that's the attendance screen. So you can go back and check and see a kid's attendance. I'm going to come back up to the top, and I'm going to look at a uh, quick lookup. Quick lookup is just going to be a snapshot. There's uh, the, att the attendance information from this week. Uh, he's been absent six absences. Um, which actually is three absences, this counts half days, so six half days. Um, this is where there would be grades, if there were grades for this kid, which I don't have any grades in for this kid, but if there were grades for this kid, the grades would be here if the kid was a third through eighth grader. There would be grades here for the different quarters. This student is a second grader, so to see his uh, kindergarten first and second, to see their standards grades, you would come over to standards, and this gives you the standards 
So if I, and it, I don't have any grades in for this kid, but if I were to click on reading, it would give me the standards, and there's second grade reading. There's no grades, but they would give you the standards for second grade reading and then tell you if you got a 1, 2, 3, or 4 on them. So you can look that up here. Um, let's see, what else is on here that we might want to look at? We already looked at his schedule. Teacher comments would be uh, comments you, uh, you've you made on him, report card comments. Um, I think that's the main ones. There, like, there's a lot of things on here that... that teachers don't normally use. Um, the other thing you might want to look at here, and we're going to click on this up here, PowerSchool Sys, to go back to the main page, is this next column. It's a printer icon. This is the reporting, uh, running reports. So I'm going to click, and again, I'm just doing homeroom because it's the same five kids for all the classes, but you would want to pick, like if I wanted to run a report for my reading class, I would click the icon next to reading. When you bring up the reporting screen, there's a lot of reports you can run. There's some that you are going to use a lot, and there's some you'll never use, um, and you'll figure out which ones are which. Um, I'm going to come down here and run. There's got two. We're going to run two of them for an example here: the network login list, and then we're going to run the student list grid. The network login list is their names and passwords. So I click network login list. I'm going to click submit. It's going to bring me over to this screen, and I've run this report several times, which is why it shows up here multiple times. But I'm going to look at the one I just ran now uh, a minute ago, network login list. Over here it says completed. I'm going to click view, and it's just a list of the names and passwords. It tells me it's my class, and then it gives me the name, gives me the username, gives me the password. Um, I can print this. I'm up here and print it, and uh, keep it on me take it with me, carry it with me, have it around. So if a kid comes up and says, I forgot my password, you can pull this sheet of paper out without having to go into power school and look it up. Um, you can pull this sheet of paper out and go, here's your password. Um, handy little tool to have around. The other one we're going to look at real quick here, and I'm going to click power school sys to go back to the main page. I'm going to click the printer icon again. The other one I'm going to show you real quick here is the student list grid. It's another report that teachers run a lot. I'm going to hit submit. And then in the student list grid, I'm going to click view. And it's just their names with a grid. So if you're going to be collecting field trip money and you want to note, you know, mark who's collect, who's paid and who hasn't, or if you are um, going to be absent and you want to leave a list, of, a class roster list for the sub to take attendance or to track anything, it's just a blank grid with the kids' names. So you don't have to type them all in or write them all in. Um, and again, people will run a couple of these maybe and then um, have them handy. So that's all. Uh, there's other reports. Some of them you'll use maybe, some of them you won't. If you come back over here to the main page and hit the printer icon, you can look through this list. There's some that you might use all the time. There's some that you'll never use. Um, I could see maybe running that one beginning of the year so you have a list with home phone numbers if you ever need to call home on a kid. Uh, bus route, birthday list. There's reports you can run. So uh, that's the basics of PowerSchool. Um, I skipped over a lot just because there's a lot in here and I didn't want this video to be two hours long. But uh, that's the ones that you're going to find yourself using most often. Um, feel free to take a look around, see what else is in there. And if you have any questions about anything you see in here or anything I've covered in this video, put a help desk ticket in um, and we'll be happy to help you.